Sound language is songs, it has language and uh, choreography in the air. You give inanimate objects certain qualities and hopefully it'll be a total immersion of your senses in there. Well, it won't be a concert, but it'll, it'll be an experience. Where, what is your fascination with these drones? Uh, t taking away the connotations they normally have and placing them in a different, uh, different surrounding and creating a different mood. Because they are sinister things. They are sinister things. They, they, that's what they're used for, sinister things. But in our case, we want to use them to create an installation of art. I want to ask you a lot about drone, but where, where does it begin for you? Well, 1963, I think. We, we rehearsed every day for a year and a half, holding a drone for about an hour and a half. I filed my, my bridge down on my viola and sustained a three-string drone. And because the, we tuned to the hum from the, from the refrigerator, we only used certain harmonics, but it was a pretty powerful sound. It was, you know, it was, it's like having a B-52 in your room. It really, it was powerful. I mean, did drugs have anything to do with it? Not really, no. I mean, there were drugs around, but they didn't drive anything. It wasn't that you were prepared to listen to that drone for longer because, because you were off your head? No, or... no, no, we weren't off our heads. We were listening, and we, I mean, to, to play it and, and maintain the intonation, it, keeping it in tune was a, was, a, was a really good discipline. And how do you look back on drink and drugs and those periods? I mean, a lot of people romanticise about it, don't they, and say it was a creative process, it was part of where we were. Yeah, some of the outrageous moments are entertaining to talk about. But apart from that, when we were talking about it, and we thought that this was going to help us get to Nirvana. And when I think back at it, and all the time that was wasted thinking that, it was, we spent more time persuading ourselves that it was going to get us there than actually getting there. And as soon as I stopped, I mean, my, my productivity just multiplied. I want, I want to ask you about Lou Reed, and I know it's a very difficult subject. And I wonder whether, have you got over Lou Reed's death? Um, not really. I don't, th I don't think that'll happen. You know, if you had a special place in music and in my development. You know, I learned a lot from him, especially about street culture in New York, how to handle yourself. Um, but it was exciting developing ideas and, you know, at the very beginning when you really just very excited about what you could do with music and words and and we both are on the same track. It Did was, he have the same approach to work that you have? Yeah. Yeah. So were you, were you were you cross or disappointed that Lou Reed continued to yeah, drink? Yeah, I'm, I'm very disappointed and I'm, I'm sad about it. It's really, you know, he was a great songwriter. Do you still feel that influence, creatively? Especially lyrically. Yeah, you've, you've, Luna had a cut to the chase. And that's, that's something that, you, that is a good thing to learn. Don't bore us, get us the chorus. Is, is, there, is there one um, Velvet Underground track that you would say that that is the definitive use of drone? Well, Venus in First was the first one that I, I knew that we had a style of our own. Because one of the things that we really didn't want to do was to imitate anybody else. And, you know, everybody was learning the guitar solo from Green Onions. And uh, let's stop that. Let's do things that our own way. So we detuned everything and made it really difficult for anybody to figure out what we were doing. I have me. We're a few days away from Scotland deciding whether or not to stay past the United Kingdom. And I wonder as a Welshman, with a, with a very deep Welsh heritage, a Welsh-speaking heritage, you know, what, what your perspective is on that? Uh, I think it's, it's, it's kind of sad that it came to that. Wales wouldn't be able to do it. Why not? They don't have the economy to back it up. What, what about the sense of identity? 
Well, that's, that'll always be there. I don't know why it, staying the way you are, you don't have a stronger, a stronger identity now as you would, would have afterwards. I, it's all, all it is, is nomenclature. There's been this explosion in revelations and stories about child sexual abuse. This is something you've been through yourself as a child, so I mean... Yeah, that, that, yeah, that, that, was, that was at the hands of a music teacher. That's at a difficult time. And you, I mean, I, I don't want to explain it, but the, um, the fact that it went on for so long and was hidden in the bushes for so long, that's really bothersome. And Rotherham and all of it. it. It's, I mean, there are a lot of institutions in this country that I'm looking at, and they're really, sadly, really very sadly, they're they're not up to snuff. Which institutions do you mean? Do you mean the police? Or? Yes, absolutely. Has it unlocked more anger in you? Yeah. Yeah, but I can't do anything about it, unfortunately. You know, it's um, except I hope that people keep their nose to the grindstone and follow this thing through because there's a lot of work to be done. I mean, the depth of this, I mean, the picture that it portrays of England in, in, in other countries is really terrible. Normally, if I interview a musician your age, they are people who spend their time now basically playing stuff they wrote 30 years ago. You are the complete antithesis of that kind of musician. And that you're, you're constantly doing new things, and you know, why? I mean, do you, do you get bored? Or? Absolutely, really fast. What, what's driving you? I mean, you don't need to be doing this, do you? You don't need to be working. Yeah, I do, for my mental health. I mean, it's really, it's how, how to remain charming to your neighbours.